Polyarteritis nodosa, or PAN, is a multi-system vasculitis of small and medium-sized arteries and is commonly associated with hepatitis B in middle-aged men. It characteristically affects the kidneys, notably sparing the pulmonary arteries. I use the mnemonic low molecular weight heparin to remember most of its features. We think its pathogenesis involves immune complex deposition, which causes segmental arterial inflammation, especially at bifurcations. This eventually results in fibrosis, causing arterial lumen narrowing, compromising the tissue it supplies. Characteristically, this process results in aneurysmal dilation one centimeter in size. Etiologically, most cases have idiopathic causes. Known causes include hepatitis B, less frequently hepatitis C virus, and hairy cell leukemia. Pan's clinical features are notoriously nonspecific. So much so, it's a hallmark of the disease. I remember low molecular weight as lethargy, malaise, and weight loss because they occur in 50% of cases. Unfortunately, this disease rapidly progresses to a fulminant illness with sequelae dependent on which organs are involved. I remember 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 60% of people get renal disease manifesting with hypertension. 50% get peripheral nervous system disease like mononeuritis multiplex, an asymmetric damage to two or more peripheral nerves. 40% get GIT disease in the form of bowel infarcts. Now, this is the main cause of death in PAN. 30% have skin involvement in the form of palpable purpura or levito reticularis, which is a mottled purplish lace-like skin pattern. 20% have genitourinary disease, including epididymitis, and 10% of people without treatment die, and 10% even after treatment end up relapsing. When investigating PAN, Blood tests should include inflammatory markers like CRP and ESR, organ-specific markers like UECs, and most importantly, serology, because it's associated with active hep B and sometimes hep C infection. Classic PAN is anchor negative. Diagnosis is based on biopsy by affected tissues. Typically, sites for biopsy include sural nerve, skin, or kidney biopsies. If no tissue is available for biopsy, specialized vascular imaging like renal angiography can be used to find classic features like aneurysm. The management of PAN is dependent on severity, distribution of disease, and presence or absence of viral hepatitis. Severe multi-system disease requires intensive induction therapy with pulse intravenous methylprednisolone and then consideration of combination cyclophosphamide. Patients with viral hepatitis should be commenced on antivirals and plasma exchange should be considered. For remission maintenance, long-term high-dose oral steroids, often with cyclophosphamide, are continued until remission is achieved. Two important considerations throughout treatment, treating hypertension, which can become intractable, and monitoring for GIT pain, which could suggest bowel infarcts or perforations. Let's summarize with some mnemonics. I remember its management is urgent and requires a PCA. Pulse, IV methylpred, cyclophosphamide, antivirals. For its presenting features, I remember low molecular weight, lethargy, malaise, and weight loss. And for its sequelae and investigations, I remember heparin, hepatitis. Although epididymitis is common, it characteristically does not affect the lungs. An arteriogram can be done if biopsy is unavailable, which might show renal disease that manifests with increased blood pressure. Finally, Neurologic disease in the form of mononeuritis multiplex is common too. Thanks for watching Townsend Teaching.